Hi everybody and welcome back to the Going For It Sim Studio. Today I'm incredibly excited because if you look right over here, these clubs are no longer stock. When I started this journey back in February, I didn't know anything about golf equipment. In fact, I didn't even know how much of a difference the shaft could make or exactly what you could control with it. Neither did I know that you could change the lie in the loft of most clubs. Coming from cycling, changing parts, the aftermarket industry is huge. It's just inherently what we do. And even back when I was racing motocross, it was the exact same way. So it was really, really hard for me not to jump straight in and just change everything right from the get-go. But I really wanted that to be part of this journey. I wanted to learn when it was time and take my sticks stock clubs as far as I thought that they could possibly go. When I started with sticks, they have a really cool size chart that makes your fitting pretty good right out of the gate. It's done by your height. And at 6'2", uh, I was a half an inch plus, and I chose their stiff shaft because as an athlete, I figured, hey, I probably am gonna have a faster swing speed anyway, so let's cut a little bit of replacement out and just start at the stiff. It was totally fine for a long, long time. And uh, I finally went out to the Pronghorn Golf Club here in Bend, Oregon, and I got to experience a true spec fitting uh, with Jason out there. And it was probably one of the coolest things I've done so far in my golfing journey. I really felt like it was time. And he, in, he educated me to a level that I just, I had no idea all of that information existed. And I had an absolutely great time. And thanks to the folks down at Parscription Golf, I now have a full line of Fujikira shafts. I'm Axiom from my 60 degree all the way through my five iron. And then I have a Ventus HB on my hybrid and a Ventus TR on my driver and three wood. So let's talk about that. All right, I'm here at the desk and I'm here for good reason. We're gonna talk about quite a few clubs and I can't wait to show you the each individual shaft that I selected, get to see them up close. And I'm gonna talk about why I chose each one um, so the, f the first off here is why now? Why did I wait seven months to do a custom fit? And I did this all on purpose. So I knew a custom fit would eventually come, but what I was wanting to do was kind of mimic how most folks would go about this journey as a new golfer. And that's buy a set of clubs and then play them for a while, whether it's one, two, three, four years before they even get a custom fit. For me, because I'm going for a challenge of breaking this 80 in a year, my progression is, is rather abnormal. I have a focus on getting really good really fast, which means I'm out here playing every day and I'm really reliant on my coaching from Alex Moore. And things change very fast. You know, I noticed that there probably were some shafting issues probably back in like May-ish, but I wanted to push through them and kind of see how far I could take just a stock set of sticks clubs for me personally. You know, could I maybe have gone the rest of this challenge with these stock shafts? I, I mean, probably, right? You know, that's kind of all um, debatable at this point. But for what I started to feel come the late July was, hey, it's time. Like there's definitely a few things in some marks that are really telling me that something's not where it needs to be for me personally. And then of course, being that cyclist brain that really wants to modify everything. So I really did purposefully not do any research on shafts. In fact, when I went to Pronghorn and saw Jason at TruSpec, I could not have named a shaft company <laughs> besides sticks, <laughs> right? I had no idea. And so he really dug the fact that I wanted to go there and pick something completely based on feel. And the education that he provided me was pretty wild. You know, I really didn't understand exactly how a shaft can alter your ball flight, your ball trajectory, your, uh, you know, just the, the swing in general. I didn't realize that so much could be done. I didn't even know that you could do the lie and the loft changes necessarily to clubs. I mean, I think I've heard about it and, and, I've, and I've seen it in the ads for custom fits, but to learn about this all directly and see it happen in person was pretty wild. Um, and so when I got there, I explained where I was at and the first thing he did was threw a couple shafts on their, the machine that basically like wiggles it and it gives you an index of how stiff your shaft is. So to back up a little bit, um, I had noticed 
pretty big issues with my driver off the bat. Uh, no matter what I did with my swing and I really didn't feel like it was a mechanical issue, uh, every time I'd come into to the ball strike um, or at impact, I always felt like that was flexing open. And so to me, that was always there and it was a reason why I never touched my driver because unless I got lucky and did something weird to get that ball to go straight, it just was nowhere near consistent enough for me to trust during a round. Um, especially when I'm trying to improve so quickly. And uh, I always relied on my three wood. And that one I could generally get 230 yards and I was able to get it consistent enough that that was my driver. Um, and then I noticed that I started seeing some loss of my wedge confidence. And uh, the distances on my wedges were actually pretty poor relatively. Um, a full swing on my, uh, on my 50, sorry, my 60 was right around 60 yards and then it was 75, 85, 90-ish as I went to my 56 and my, my 50, 52. Um, which I think aren't terrible, but I just, I lost a lot of control. I was getting a lot of ball flights going right when I had an inside out path. Um, and I was told by somebody, I can't remember who, that a lot of that would get fixed with shafts. And that kind of started the, oh man, you know what? Maybe it's time to go for a full custom fit. And then the final straw was when I went out to that outdoor golf course at Tethero, when I was hitting my irons, um, when I would take a divot, I noticed it was more of a crescent shaped than it was an actual standard divot that you'd see. Um, and to me, that wasn't right. And again, I didn't think that had to do anything with the length of the club because I knew it was the, the, the length was fine, right? The sticks does that really well. They have that nice size chart that you go based off your height. So when I talked to Alex about that, you know, he had mentioned, hey, you know, it's probably time to go in and get that custom fit because you need to make sure your equipment is up to par if you really want a chance to break 80. So I immediately set that appointment with TrueSpec and got to meet Jason. So right back to where I finished that story, um, when those shafts were on the machine, they came in at a rather flexible index, um, not a stiff. And uh, I had later learned from him that that was pretty common across stock shafts in general, even from some of the major brands that even if they say stiff, they don't necessarily come that way. So I definitely recommend you taking your clubs into your local shop and having them throw it on that machine and find out to make sure that you are running the, the shaft stiffness that you think you are, or at least that they tell you you are. Um, and so from there, we just got right off onto it. And uh, the way we did it was we simply took the, we, he picked a club head and the iron, a six iron that was similar profile to what I have now. Um, and I'm gonna go into a lot more detail on this true spec experience um, in a different video because I feel like it, it deserves its own video. Um, and so we started with the P70, P790. And uh, it was a similar profile to the sticks and we immediately started swinging the six iron is where we started. And uh, we did it all. I mean, we did steel shafts, we did, we did heavy, we did light, we did mid. And uh, what I did was literally hit them until I was like, that's the one. And here's the really interesting thing. Um, I selected the clubs and he wrote them down. And I didn't look at what I chose till after I had left. And uh, for the irons and the wedges, I had chosen this Fujikira Axiom. And it's a 105S, and it's what I have from my 60 degree all the way up to my five iron. My favorite part was it felt so good. Every time I hit impact with that, this Axiom shaft, I got a smile. And I hit some pretty good shafts. I have no idea what they are. I had no idea what I hit. Um, I knew I didn't like the steel pretty quickly. Um, and then the other graphite shafts I hit were great. But this one in particular, there was something about it. It was the one shaft I turned around and said, that's the one I want. And I still get that feeling today. When I hit here in my sim, every solid impact on this thing, just, oh, it's awesome. It's so cool. Uh, and that's what I look forward to. If I'm out here every day, it's the same reason why I built the sim so nice. I want to get excited. I am excited about golf, and it's such a fun game. Um, and get this whole world of shafts and stuff is just, it's cool. Um, and so... Moving on, and then I guess we'll talk distances. So with my distances, have, they I have, they're not, haven't been consistent because I'm getting better so quickly. Um, and uh, when I went out there, my six iron, and here's a funny story for you. Um, 
I'm not used to what ball flight looks like out in the open. And we were hitting off of a mat, uh, off of, out of a sim bay, basically out onto like an outdoor range. And I was getting frustrated hitting the six iron, just being like, why can I not hit this ball as far as I do in the sim? Like I was doing it fine the other day. And Jason was like, you gotta calm down, man. He's like, you just don't know what it looks like. You're hitting it 200 yards, uh, which is great for a six iron. So that was pretty cool. We got a good laugh out of that. Um, and so my six iron length was right there around 195, 205, and then a pretty common 10-ish yard difference as the clubs go down or add my five iron to that. Um, apart from my pitching wedge and my nine iron, for some reason, I just couldn't hit. I mean, my pitching wedge had started going down the faster and the more mechanically sound my swing had become. Um, and I think I was really doing the pitching wedge probably around 125. 5, 120, and my 9 iron was going 130 if I was lucky. Um, and so after the fact, when I've got now my, my axioms in there, um, my 9 iron is right where it should be, right up at 155, 160, and then I'm 170, 175 with my 7 iron, or sorry, my 8 iron, and then my, my, my 7 iron is uh, just a little bit more than that, and it goes up pretty, pretty consistently on that. Um, and my... My spread seems better. It's a lot more consistent. I don't have so many of the left-right flyers that I have no control over. Um, and because we've made so many swing changes on top of new shafts, it's kind of hard to say exactly what did what. But um, flat out, my control is dramatically better. And the feel is so nice with those axioms. Um, I highly recommend those if that's where you're looking at. Go find some. Go hit them. Um, I think you're going to get the exact same feeling that I did. Um, and unannounced, to, unannounced, 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 is that how you say it? To me, uh, apparently they're like the hottest shafts on the market. And those of you who know me a little bit better, uh, I always pick the bougie stuff. <laughs> I always do. It's so funny that when I got back and shared the list with some buddies, they're like, dude, how could you have picked the bougiest stuff out there? Um, completely blind. And uh, it's funny. I still get a kick out of it. Um, and again, it was all, it was blind. I didn't pick any of this stuff because I thought I, I knew it was the hottest or the coolest and it was Velocore across the board. So clearly Fujikira has something that fits my feel really well with that, uh, that those, those Velocore shafts because we move on to the hybrid and it's the Ventus HB, the 8S. This was a shaft for me that it, it, this is one of my favorite clubs, so I didn't want to ruin the way it worked. I hit the sticks one just fine, um, but what this actually did was it took the, the hybrid. I still have about the same distance, but what I get is a better ball flight. Um, I'll hit the hybrid right around 220, 230, and it's instead of a, a lower flight with a lot of roll, I'm getting a nice controlled up, down, with a really low or short, I guess, um, rollout and a good stick. So since I've had that club, I've hit three eagles, um, all being able to hit the green on a par five with my second shot. So clearly that was a great addition for, for what I'm doing. It feels great, still absolutely love that four hybrid. Now, I didn't do my five wood on purpose because for me, the five wood and the hybrid go the same distance and I prefer to have the, the confidence in the hybrid and it's a four hybrid that gets me to the same distance with a higher ball flight that's able to kind of stick. So we skipped over to the three wood, which was, I mean, it was one of my favorite clubs. The reason it was is because I was afraid of the driver and we'll talk about that in a second. And this basically has been my driver for the last seven months. So we decided to go with the Ventus TR 6S Red. Um, and uh, again, it's got the Velocore in it. And this gives me the ball flight that I've been missing out of the three wood. It's a much higher traje tra trajectory. Um, and uh, it's gotten me about 20 more yards. Um, so I hit this pretty consistently at 250, um, dead nut straight most of the time. In fact, yesterday I was playing, I had three out of nine shots that had zero degree left to right offset. So that's kind of cool and fun to do. Whether that's the right way to do it or not, it was really cool to see. Um, very comfortable hitting this club. The feel is wonderful. Um, Styx actually has a pretty cool sound when, they, when you hit them just right. And uh, it, this is the addition I needed to that three wood. So moving on to the driver, which is everybody's big club, right? Um, 
We went Ventus Blue TR with the 6S also. We went to a certain index on the shafts on the high end of the stiff range, specifically because Jason wanted me to be have my clubs where they needed to be when I was there in February going to break 80, not have to reshaft again and do necessarily where I'm at because I am improving so quickly and my game is changing so rapidly um, that I didn't want to kind of back myself into a corner. Um, now, I didn't do a black because I just don't need a low tra trajectory like that. Like that ball flight is was not good for me. The, the poor way I hit the driver at this, at this time, I just need a little bit more up to help me get the, the ball where it needs to go. Now, when I was there, we did the, we kept it consistent at true spec and we did the tailor made across the board. So the stealth two was the driver head that I hit. And, and it was funny cause I kept saying like, Hey, no matter what I do, these balls go right with sticks. And he's like, show me sure enough. Every shot I hit was right on the good spot on the face. And it was just, just every time, um, what I've seen, couldn't tell you how many times and, uh, switched over to the, to the uh, Ventus. Um, I think the Ventus was even the first one I tried, I want to say, because for some reason I remember that. Um, it was straight, just right where it needs to be. You know? And then we tried a couple other shafts, and I just kept going back to this one, obviously, that I picked again. And uh, it's kind of funny that it's just Fujikira across the board. Um, and uh, so now I can get a lot more, I have a lot more confidence in my driver. So I think as I progress over the next couple months, my driver is going to come back into play I've already used it a few times and I can get it to go 250, 270. Um, just not consistent enough for me to comfortably play around with it and shoot some low scores. So how has my game changed um, since getting these shafts? It's changed a lot for the better. Um, <laughs> my scores have gone from the high 70s, low 80s to high 60s, low 70s. And that's honest. Like it's pretty crazy. In fact, I even backed up to the blue tees just to be able to use other clubs in my bag and challenge myself a little bit more. So that's the progression that I need to see. Cause I think if I have any chance to break 80 or get close to 80 outside, I'm going to need to shoot some pretty low scores consistently in the sim. Um, and so now for the question of the day, I believe these are the most expensive and trickiest sticks in existence. What do you think? Am I crazy for putting these shafts on these clubs or did I make the right choice? Now, my answer is I think I did the right thing because I don't necessarily think it's the club faces or club heads. Um, I think the shaft, I got to a point where I was ready to go ahead and switch those over. Um, and I've seen it too many times where folks have played these clubs and it's the same reaction across the board. They look at them and they go, wow, these are really cool. And then they hit the irons and they go, wow, that feels really good. And it goes really far. And then they look at the hybrid, the woods and the driver and go, oh, you know, this is where I have my hesitancy. Um, there's just no technology in these like the other company has, the other major companies have. There's no way these are going to be good. And they hit them and sure enough, wow, these are great. Um, they're good. Uh, you know, and so I'm not going to change these again. This is the club that I'm going to use all the way through the, through, the, uh, through the challenge here when we break 80 outside. Um, I still need to do my putter. I haven't done that yet. I know that's a whole separate type of fit. Um, the putter shaft probably does need to be changed uh, probably lengthwise more than anything. Um, but I don't know enough about it. It's something else I have to learn and I'm still not going to nerd out on that because when I go and do my, my putter fit, I'm going to do it the same approach and I'm going to go based off of what feels the very best. Um, but I would love to hear your thoughts. Tell me what you think. I want to know if I'm crazy. I want to know if I made the right, the right decision here. Uh, please like, follow, and subscribe and we will see you next time.